Playing Morrowind with a hand-to-hand -hand build is like trying to remove soap scum from the bathtub with a toothbrush. Sure, you'll get it done eventually, but it's not going to be a pleasant experience. This is... This is... This is... What? This is boring. Morrowind is my favorite game because of how flexible it is. It's so flexible that nearly any creation that you can think up is possible given the right build or mods, and maybe just a dash of exploiting some questionably designed systems. Whee! <laughs> Whee! Look at how far he goes, yo! But what if I want to be a superhero? What if I want to be the Incredible Hulk and punch a god to death? I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. God. We can. I mean, technically, we can do just about anything. But will it be fun? Let's dig in, shall we? First, we'll be using two very important mods. MGEXE, the Morrowind Graphics Extender, and MWSE, the Morrowind Script Extender. But I ran into some major issues trying to get MWSE to work, and when I looked the error up, the internet failed me completely. Google? I have just a few words for you. You done fucked it up! Fix this shit! Now! I was streaming the game the first day and ended up having to stop the stream because nothing worked and because I couldn't find an answer to the problem, I was in a cold sweat thinking I was gonna have to cancel the video. But alas, it did not come to that. So I got everything working. I managed to get everything working. It was the weirdest thing. What I had to do with MWSE was I had to take the DLL for MWSE and delete it and then reinstall that specific DLL into the folder again. So like delete it, go into the recycling bin, restore the file, and then all of a sudden MWSE worked. I, I can't tell you why. It, j it just works, as they say. Then once MWSE was working and I could access the submenu for mods, I installed the Iron Fist mod. Here is the Iron Fist mod, and this is what it does. Iron Fist allows you to wear gauntlets and use those gauntlets like weapons, which increases the damage that you do when you hit people with unarmed attacks, which means you do fatigue damage and health damage, sort of like Oblivion. So in other words, it's actually good. Then for some flavor, I installed the Fair Magica Regen mod and a good place to stay so I had a place to store all my gear. And display mannequins for all the armor that I'd be picking up, because collecting gear in Morrowind is a lot like Pokemon. I gotta catch them all. The beautiful thing is, even when we are spiritually drifting, God is in pursuit of our hearts. Then I installed the Diablo 2 mod, which randomly spawns in constant effect gear, and they're not unlike Diablo 2, and that sounds like it would be extremely overpowered, and it would be, but it doesn't proc often enough for it to really make a difference. Ooh. <laughs> what? What? We already got something awesome. Holy shit. That's awesome, dude. In fact, by the time I was level 38, it had only procced five times in the whole playthrough. Not sure why, but that's the way it went. The last mod I have installed is an absolute necessity for anyone who's found a constant effect shield spell, and that is a mod that removes the spell effects on the shield spell. They are obnoxious, they take up too much space on the screen, and basically blind you. Install this mod and thank me later. And that's about it for mods, let's take a look at the build. To make an Incredible Hulk build, we need two primary things, hand-to-hand -hand and alteration. This is why we picked the Breton instead of the Orc as our race, because sure, it would be nice to fortify our attack by 100 and one-shot most creatures that come within punching range of us, but we need that extra little bit of magicka that we'll get with the Breton so we can cast spells like this. Great. And now with the hop toad on... <laughs> Look at that shit! Look at that shit! 
We need conjuration, alchemy, and enchant for when we fortify our gear with the jump spell so we have a permanent boost to our jumping ability, and the rest of our skills are really up to you. Though I would highly suggest having acrobatics as at least a minor skill so you can get around Vardenfell like the world's strongest nerd. Hey, how many PhDs does Hulk have? Zero. How many PhDs does the banner have? Seven. In order to have bulletproof skin, we need to pick up heavy armor and level that bad boy as high as we can get it because the Iron Fist mod scales your hand-to-hand -hand damage to the armor rating and durability of your gauntlets. So the higher the heavy armor skill, the higher our damage will be, and by the end of the game, we'll be one-shotting most mobs. And the coolest thing about this mod is that it has sliders that adjust the damage you do and how quickly your gauntlets degrade so you can pick your own level of difficulty. For instance, you could lower your damage if you, say, like cock and ball torture? That, that, that hurts. You've been kicked in the nuts. We'll be picking the lady as our star sign because of the increase in endurance, which will help us out in the early levels so we don't die as much while trying to fist fellas and gals to death. You can use the warrior sign, but I feel like that sign has diminishing returns in the late game. Let's talk about our path to godhood and glory as Bruce Banner, the man known as the Hulk. The first thing that any good Morrowind player does is leave the character creation room and steal everything that isn't nailed down. Anything that has a value over 6 is fair game, as well as anything that can be crafted into a restore fatigue potion, because as any seasoned veteran of Morrowind knows, Fatigue is the reason, at least in the early game, that you lived through that fight or you died in a shame so deep that your ancestors will not rise from the dead to help you. Give Fargoth his ring, talk to the Braveheart looking dude above the merchant shop and convince him that you're a totally trustworthy dude who would totally bring back the money when you found it and then totally do not do that and instead buy a bunch of cool shit for yourself like heavy metal armor gauntlets to punch people in the face with. We're gonna get these gauntlets. First thing we're gonna do we're gonna check out this armor, put all it on. Don't take his pants off, what are you doing? You pervert. So, now our attack rating is seven to 21, so it's the equivalent of like a really good sword. Damn, if I can land a hit. The next morning. Bro, land a hit. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Before we test the hand to hand out on some real threats, we need to collect the tax money off the dead tax collector. Then we head over to the suicidal mage and pick up everything off his corpse. Kind of feels weird doing hand to hand with uh, heavy armor and not doing it with unarmed or unarmored. Feels wrong. Feels wrong. Feels wrong, but oh so right. Like kissing your hot cousin. To test out our newly found might, we head over to what I like to call the filter cave. This is the cave that tells you whether or not your build is doo-doo or godly. And it tells you by either being pushed over like a dude on crutches or by causing you to restart the game in a fit of rage. You. <laughs> Did you call me? Did you call me an Enwa? Come on, do your thing. Come on. Oh, he got me! Son of a bitch. He got me again. Oh! Come on. Please work. Yes! Oh my god, we got it. Cool. I managed to kill everyone to death in that cave, but we're still far away from the mighty juggernaut that is the Hulk. We miss more often than we hit, and when we do hit, it feels like we're punching with pillows on our hands. First place we want to go is Balmora. Balmora is our staging area for all of our bullshit. We use it for storage and as a fast travel hub for getting just about any place in Morrowind that has a Silt Strider or a Mage's Guild. But before we get there, there's a place. A place where all new players go to die. And it's this cave right here. Alright, let's see if we can handle these guys. It's like, are you gonna attack me or what, dude? Oh hell no, we can't handle these guys, no. <laughs> okay, apparently not. 
and Balmora were able to fast travel to all the major trainers that can train us up, and as a result of that training, power level our character. The goal is to make enough money that we can come back to Balmora and travel to all the major hubs like the trainers in the Arena Canton and Vivek who can train our heavy armor skill and our acrobatic skill. But to do that, we need a lot of money. And unfortunately, all of these merchants in all these towns are flat fucking broke. So we need to see the man, the myth, the legend, the creeper. I'm creeping. <laughs> Go to Caldera through the Mage's Guild teleportation and head down the street to this building with a bunch of orcs inside. All of them, for some reason, not wearing shirts. Who the hell knows what kind of grab assery these guys are up to in there? Then head upstairs and talk to this cute little fella. He has 5,000 gold to trade with, and when he runs out, you can restock his gold by standing in front of him for 24 hours, saying nothing staring through him as if he weren't there, remembering a time when waiting 24 hours didn't actually take 24 hours. I'm looking at you, Starfield. Then once we've gotten our skills trained up a few levels, we're ready to do some missions, like the Fighter's Guild questline, which has us punching faces, taking damage, and leveling up two of our most important skills. That's what we like to see, folks. Knock them down. That's what we like to see. God, there's... Oh, shit. Okay. Shit. Oh, man, this is going to be bad. Yeah, this is really bad. One hour later. She like cast those spells like instantly. <laughs> After we turn in a few missions, gain some money, and climb the ranks of the Fighters Guild, we need to go to Ald Ruin to get our movement ability, Tenor's Hop Toad. To find this spell, I went to every single mage in every single mage's guild, and unfortunately, I was unable to find it. But you can find it easily by going to the Fortin out rune and talking to this person. Please be you. There it is. Ugh. Great. And slow fall. We need both of those. Good. Now we have everything we need. Now we need to level up a couple of different skills in order to craft our constant effect gear. We need conjuration and... Okay, well that's actually it. We need just conjuration. There's a couple of ways to do this and the choice is yours. You could simply use the skill and sometime around next year you might level it up 10 times. You could download an auto clicker and leave it running for a few hours and that'll level it up quite a bit. Or you could do what I do, which is sleep until I'm woken up by a Dark Brotherhood assassin, kill him, take all his shit, repeat until I can't carry any more gear, and sell it all to Creeper. Then head to Valenvarian Propylon Chamber and train with the trainer there. She can train you all the way up to level 81, and whenever you run out of money, just go to sleep and wait for the sweet sound of assassins raising you from your slumber. Rinse and repeat this until you have your conjuration to 81, then head to tell Brenora and talk to Felon Marion. He'll be able to sell you the Golden Saint spell. I don't even possess the, the ability to, uh, to cast it because I don't have enough mana or magicka. Now there's a bug in Morrowind where no matter how high your conjuration skill is, it will always show a 0% chance that the spell will succeed. This is false. Use the spell anyway and you'll see that you have the ability to summon one, it's just not a very high chance of success, which is fine. We'll have plenty of intelligence and therefore magicka once we drink a few big brain potions. We make these potions by mixing ashiams and bloat, and if you don't know how to get these potions or how to make them, go check out my original how to Morrowind video, link in the description. Anyway, we suck down enough of these potions to get our intelligence to somewhere around 3,000, and then we not only summon our Golden Saint, because we'll have an almost infinite supply of Magicka, but we'll also be able to craft constant effect gear with our jump spell on it, and another piece of gear enchanted with the slow fall spell so we won't hurt ourselves every time we jump. First things first. I think I am going to enchant the helmet. We're gonna go constant effect. 
There it is, nine. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! How do you like me now? <laughs> Then once we got in our gear enchanted, I went over to Ebonheart Underground Caves and got myself the best curious in the game, or damn near close to it, that is, the Lord's Mail. Sexy ass armor, baby. Ooh, it's so good. And while I'm there, I take the rest of Furious's gear because it's a nice upgrade from the crap that I've been using. The whole time we've been traveling, I've been going inside of every dungeon I come across and looting it, as well as killing everything inside. Because our boy needs levels in hand to hand, and by the time I got the Lord's Mail, I was already fairly high level, but it was still taking me way too long to kill everything I came across. The only thing that saved me in these fights was the heavy armor and swigging an unhealthy amount of healing potions every fight. But what about our damage? That still leaves something to be desired. We can clear this problem up pretty quickly with an awesome pair of Daedric Gauntlets, which can be found in an endgame dungeon called Kogarun, way up north where the Ashlanders live. Oh, you bitch. For these damn gloves. Ooh, hell yeah, give me that gear. Constant effect, blind on self. That seems bad. Like you wouldn't want that. I feel like I'm in an end game area. <laughs> You know, funny story, but um, I've never beaten this game. I have never beaten this game. <laughs> I have played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of this game. I've never beaten it. Ooh, you some bitch! Where you at? <laughs> oh, come on! How you gonna give me a blight? Damn, it's one of the bad ones, too. It's your strength, sons of bitches. Now, there's gotta be a place that I missed. It, you know what? I bet you it's it's somewhere over here. Something like that. Okay. Yes! Awesome, we found it. Hulk smash. Yep. Yep. It is absolutely broken. And oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Save the game. <laughs> Not have that happen again, okay? Where the fuck are the gauntlets? There they are. Damn. Those, look at those, look at them. They're so sexy. Oh, that damage that they do. Oh my god, the damage. The damage is insane. Now that we have a good pair of gauntlets, it's time to enchant them. And with the Iron Fist mod, you have a feature where if you enchant your gauntlets with cast on use spells, they will cast on hit instead. So we'll have, on top of our already insane damage, be adding on a ton of magic damage. I have an idea. Let's see if it works. That's not bad. You can do that. Um. There you go. Holy shit. What? The damage on these things is gonna be fucking crazy. The charge cost is pretty high though. Let's make it so we can get at least 30 casts out of that. Five is not bad. Wow, look at the fucking damage. That's awesome! Okay, one more time. Clean across Balmora. Oh, wow. <laughs> so good. Oh, man, wow. Now that's a Hulk jump. So we got one more thing that we're gonna do. We are going to enchant this exquisite robe with slow fall so that we don't damage ourselves. Got her. Ha <laughs> ha, baby! 
That's what I'm talking about. Now we can hop toad all over the place and never take damage. Have slow fall. Ha! Ha ha! Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Now, now we're ready. Now we're ready to do the main story. Hey, bud. How you doing? How can I? I bet you weren't expecting uh, a former slave to show up dressed like this, huh? Yeah. Now that we have our epic gear, our movement ability, and decent weapons. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. <laughs> It's time to start the main quest, because if we don't do that, we'll never be able to punch a god. When we arrive at Caius' skooma and moon sugar den, he's shirtless, staring lovingly into our eyes as we deliver a coated package to him. Now just look at his face. I can't tell if he's high or in love with us. We're made a novice in the service of the Emperor and the Secret Order of the Blades, so we are technically a spy, even if we do intend to drive out all the foreign scum from our beautiful Morrowind. He gives us orders to talk to another guy over at the Fighters Guild, so we head over there and talk to a guy named Hasfat Antibolus, a name so ridiculous it had to be generated by an algorithm. That guy has tacitly denied that he was high and drugged up when he wrote this. That guy has tacitly denied that. He said, I was not high, I was drunk. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm an alcoholic, not a drug addict. Before this has fat guy will tell us what we need to know, he needs a favor. Because of course he does. It's a video game, people always hold an information hostage. He needs a Dwemer puzzle box from a Dwemer ruin called Arkingthand, or however the hell you pronounce that word. So we head over to the ruins the way a gentleman heads to any place, and that's to jump there. Leveling up your acrobatic skill and alteration as you do. Because to build a character in Morrowind, you can never let a skill go unused or you're just not playing the game right. Oh, this guy with the skeletons on the bridge? He's gonna, he's gonna find out. He's gonna fuck around and find out. Come on, fight. <laughs> he found out, man. At this level, there's really not a whole lot that can stand up to me without immediately dying, and I think, and I can't tell, but it looks like the creatures in the main story don't scale to your level because, well, just look at this shit. How does it feel to know death is near? Excuse me? What did you say? I'm sorry, I was too busy killing you. You won't escape me back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You're hardly a match for me. All right. <laughs> We're speed running the main story, folks. We're speed running this shit. It's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Once we have the puzzle box, it's back to Hasfat to learn about the sixth house, the Nerevarine, and House Dagoth. We learn that Nerevar was a great leader who died but is prophesied to return and unite all the great houses against the invaders, drive them out, and make Morrowind great again. But the temple outlaws the belief in such a prophecy because it undermines the false divinity of the tribunal. Vivek, in particular, since he's a backstab. The temple prosecutes and imprisons anyone who believes or spreads the belief of the Nerevarine prophecies and labels them as heretics. Once we have the information for Caius, we head back to him. These notes are from Hazafat Annabalus. Excellent. I trust he didn't work you too hard for them. My. We get a new mission to head over to the Mage's Guild in Balmora and talk to the orc there. She'll supposedly give us more information, and I love how the main quest is structured in the opening moments. It sends you to places where distractions and other missions can be had, so while you're doing the main quest, you can take breaks from it naturally because you're directed to places that these missions can be had. It's, it's really quite good. Sharn sends us to fetch a skull from an ancestral tomb and warns us that the natives have some prejudices against necromancy, which calls into question just what exactly is she planning on doing with that skull? Peter, are you peeing in that skull? Oh, no, Lois, I'm getting up and walking all the way to the bathroom and doing it there. 
pain in the ass. So we go hopping over to the tomb. Okay, so south of Pelagid. I think they mean south on this road. There she be. Oh man, I've already been here. I hope I didn't like fuck the quest up. There it is. After we return to Skull of Sharn, she has some things to say about the Nerevarine belief, which she calls the Nerevarine cult, which implies that this is not a mainstream belief and the majority of people seem to regard it as superstitious mumbo jumbo. Uh, this Ashlander cult believes that the long dead hero Nerevar will be reborn to honor ancient promises to the tribe. According to legend, the prophesized Nerevarine will cast down the false gods at a tribunal temple restore the traditional ancestor worship practiced by the Ashlanders and drive all outsiders from Morrowind. Both temple and empire outlaw the cult, but it persists among the Ashlanders who care very little for the imperial or temple law. When we return with the notes that Sharn gave us to Caius, he sends us on another errand. This time, this quest will take us to a place dreaded by all who've played Morrowind, Vivek, the city of mazes and stupid bullshit. When we get there, we have to find three informants. Adhiranir, a Khajiit with a stupid name, Hulia, an Argonian who likes to kill people, and Mara Milo, a nerd who's in the library in a temple district. This is one of the many multi-phase quests that you'll be given during the main quests, and I hate these the most because you don't really engage with my favorite part of the loop, and that's the explore, kill, loot, repeat loop that this game totally nails. But what it does do is thoroughly flesh out the story of the game and get you invested even more into what's happening in Morrowind. Through this mission we learn all kinds of stuff like the ancient Ashlanders who are native people of Morrowind who've been driven from their lands and forced to live in the most hostile parts of the island. They've been forced to live this way because of their belief in the return of the Nerevar. They're forced far away from civilization so they cannot spread their heretical beliefs to the rest of the population because the return of Nerevar means the returning of the Ashlanders' ancient rites and traditions, demoting Vivek and the tribunal from gods to whatever they actually are. We also learned that many people have come to Morrowind claiming to be the reincarnated Nerevar, but none of them have actually been able to pass the tests laid out in the Lost Prophecies. All of them, false incarnates. Mara Milo tells us to get a copy of a book called The Progress of Truth, which will explain more about the Nerevarine cult, and a copy of this book can be gotten from Jobash's Rare Books, the same bookstore we took the lizard to earlier. The most important thing about this book is that it tells us that there are two faces that the dissident priests, or the priests of the Nerevarine cult, wear. There is their public face, which praises the tribunal and the temple, and these writings are called the Hierographa, or the priestly writings, and a face that they only wear in private, and those hidden writings they call the Apocrypha. They publicly praise the tribunal and paint them as heroes, while privately spreading the secrets and less than heroic things the tribunal did to achieve the godhood they now enjoy. There are two accounts of what happened on Red Mountain the day that the Nerevar and his army fought the Dwemer. The tribunal spreads the lie that the Nerevar destroyed the Dwemer and later died of his wounds, but according to the Apocrypha, he did not kill the Dwemer, that they in fact killed themselves, and that Nerevar did not die from wounds sustained in battle. He rather died from treachery at the hands of the tribunal when they convened to discuss what to do with the profane secrets they discovered in Red Mountain. So there's the truth, and then there's fact. And those two stories are what the player is presented with, and this game leaves it up to the player to decide which is real until the truth is later revealed. The writing in this game is patient, and careful never to give up too much too soon, and every faction in Morrowind is motivated by self-interest, as they should be, and as a result, it makes the world of Morrowind a more believable and immersive place than, well, just about any other Bethesda title to date. Once we return to Caius to report on what we've found, we're told to rest and kick up our feet while Caius digests what he's learned, and once we do, we have a vision. You had a disturbing dream. You can only recall one part. A tall figure with a golden mask led you among the dead as through a wedding celebration. You heard many voices, but no lips moved. Strained to breathe, but your chest didn't move. The tall figure spoke with each figure as he passed among them, laughing and joking as if they were alive. He made no reply. You tried to cry out, but without breath, your tongue fluttered in vain. And we're sent to make contact with the Ashlanders so we can become more intimate with the Nerevarine cult, their traditions, 
and to learn about the Nerevarine prophecies. To do that, we have to make contact with a former Ashlander living in Alan Ruin. We're told by him that the tribes are guided primarily by their hatred of foreigners and that a suitable gift is tailored to the wants and needs of whoever you're given the gift to. And guess what that means? Money. It always means money. We also learn that, just like a vampire, we cannot enter a person's yurt without invitation or risk getting our booty hole popped. When we return to Caius to report, he gives us a shocking revelation. He and the Emperor believe that I fit the description of the prophesied return of the Nerevarine, and they send me to the Ashlander tribe, the Urshalaku, to be tested against the prophecies. The Emperor wants the Nerevarine to return, but to be in the pocket of the Empire when he does, Thus his interest in the prophecies, because if it's true that the Nerevar will drive out all the foreigners, it's in the Empire's best interest to have the Nerevar in pocket beforehand so their interest in this land doesn't get lost. When we get to the camp, we're treated to a lore dump about the Nerevar in the battle at Red Mountain. We learn that Nerevar was in fact the one who drove out the Outlanders from Morwen who had been driving the Dunmer people from their land. He's also credited as being the one who destroyed the Dwemer and their foul magics, and his reward for such a feat was to be betrayed by the cons of the Great Houses, and he was killed in secret. We jump through a bunch of hoops, bribe some people, get called the good boy, and were eventually sent to speak with the Urshalaku Ashkan. He wishes to set up his own test of whether or not we are the Nerevarine by sending us on an errand to loot the tomb of the ancient Ashkans and Ashlanders. Well, he didn't say loot the caves, he just said bring back a bow, but I couldn't resist stealing all their shit. Here we go. Okay. What do we got here? We got glass greaves. We got a glass sword here. Mage Bane. I head through the tomb, beat up the ghost of the Ashcan's father, steal his bow, and head back to camp to learn more about the Nerevarine prophecies. We're sent to Nabani Mesa to be told that she doubts a white dude with a receding hairline could be the Nerevarine, let alone a successful YouTuber, and after insulting us, she sends us on a quest to retrieve the lost prophecies. But before we can do that, Kaya sends us on another mission to infiltrate the Six House base, and while there, perforate the skulls of everyone we meet there with our fists. While we're there, we loot the bracers behind the coffin and leave the way we came, but we don't leave empty-handed. We leave with corpus disease, the cancer of Morrowind, and if we don't find a way to cure ourselves, we'll end up just like one of these zombies wandering around mindlessly the perimeter of Red Mountain. So, to find a cure, we're off to the eastern coast to see Deveyeth Fear, the man who can literally go and fuck himself. So now that we got the southern crotch rot, we need to head to one of the oldest living perverts this side of Morrowind, and it gets no more perverted than making four female clones of yourself and having sex with them. Deveyeth Fear is an old man, like really old, about 4,000 years old if tales are to be believed, and he was around when Sotha Sil was still studying for his SATs. He resides over a prison of sorts called the Corpusarium, a place where the victims of the curse of the flesh go to live out their days as they slowly lose themselves and humanity to the disease. Deveyeth has a sort of compassion for the victims, and he has them guarded by an Argonian who threatens you with violence if you lay a hand on the victims, let alone to fist. When you go to Deveyeth, he'll send you down there to retrieve a pair of Dwemer boots from what appears to be the last living dwarf in existence. This guy will tell you all kinds of lore about the Dwemer, and can also restore Wraithguard if you went and killed Vivek instead of having him bless your gauntlets. Deveyeth will exchange the boots for a potion that will, as he puts it, not exactly cure the disease, but will make it dormant, like herpes before an outbreak. Once we've drunk the potion, we become immune to the disease and blight, and no longer have to worry about getting a hiv while we're out exploring, which is great, because where we're going, disease and blight are rampant. We head back to Caius, and he has some bad news for us. He's leaving us. He's been recalled back to the Empire, and we'll never see him or his beautiful six-pack ever again. The good news is, he's gonna leave his pipe and moon sugar behind because the Empire doesn't take too kindly to drug addicts in their service. But before he leaves, he puts us in charge of the blades in the province and gives us our final orders before he goes. We need to find Mara Milo and get a copy of the Lost Prophecies to give to the wise lady so that we can start our path to becoming the Nerevar. And this mission is like the calm before the storm. This is, in my opinion, the last truly great mission before you begin on the slog that is becoming the leader of all the great houses and Nerevarine of all the Ashlander tribes. See, what happens is you get to the Hall of Wisdom to find out that Mara Milo is no longer there. 
but she leaves you with a message. Meet me in my room. So you go to her room and find out that there's no one there. Just a note, a coded message that tells you to grab some intervention scrolls and come to rescue her in a floating prison rock above the temple district. We grab the scrolls, head to the prison rock, and break her out while the entire place descends on us because Hulk is not a stealthy guy. What do you want? Oh. Well then, never mind. Not you. Spy, you I have calm humanoid. I don't know why I'm not using it. Greetings, Outlander. I hey, there we go. I need one divine intervention scroll for my escape plan. Getting out will be a lot faster and safer for you if you have one. But if you haven't got one for yourself, maybe you can find some other way out. Now, listen, here's my plan. Give me the divine intervention scroll. I'll meet you at the secret dissident priest monastery in Holomayan for your safety. We'll travel separately. So we head to Holomayan by taking the boat from Ebenhart. From this point in the game, it breaks up into two main quests that each have multiple phases, and this is where the story starts to drag for me. It's not that the missions are bad, they're actually pretty cool sometimes. It's just that, by far, these missions take the longest amount of time to complete, and they require a lot of insider knowledge, so to speak, about which specific person in each of the great houses you need to talk to. But let's start with the best mission the Ashlander missions. The premise is pretty simple. Go to each leader of every tribe, do a chore for them, and they'll name you the Nerevarine. They seem pretty straightforward, and for the most part they are. One mission has you go into a Daedric ruin to clear it out so that the tribe can take refuge there. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Excuse me, sir. I am here to rob and pillage this place. Please do not interrupt me, okay? Come on, pull your hands out. Jesus Christ. Soul trap don't last forever, man. What? Daedric Katana, 50,000 gold, okay. I mean, can I really turn that down? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I don't need it. I don't need more money. I got all the money I can need, Paul. Stop. Stop whoring money. Stop hoarding money. Stop whoring yourself out for money. Offer to spare her life in exchange for shelter for the Ahimusa. Ah, I see. You propose that I permit those poor Ahimusa tribesmen to come here and take shelter here on the island and in return you won't kill me. So the game is challenge and bluff, and given the apparent high level of your skills, I hesitate to call your bluff, so you win. I concede. Um, are you ready for me to accompany you to Al Daedroth? Oh, damn it, really? You have to come with me? This is, this is bullshit that I have to take her with me. You're gonna say that the entire time, aren't you? What do you do? Oh my god! Na no, you're actually going to attack every mud crab we see? This is gonna take a long ass time. Oh, now she's gotta run all the way to fuck back to where she started. Uh huh, okay. Cool. Soon I must return to the IMS camp and make preparations to relocate here. What is the mad stone? What is this? Madstone of the Ahimusa. Pass when used sound. I what, e what even is it? Is it a ring? Well, whatever it is, I ain't using it. Another tribe will demand that you kill their leaders and help another Ashlander find the confidence to lead the tribe. But these are all pretty bog standard. But then you come to this mission. And there is nothing standard about this mission. Because you're an outli Outlander and don't know our customs, I do you the great favor in naming my gift I wish to receive. A high-born Telvani bride. A pretty one, plump, with big lips. Big hips to bring me many sons. But I have a plan. Go to my friend Savile Emeon, slave mistress of the festival slave market in Telerun, 
and tell her you need a pretty Dunmer slave to pose as a Telvani lady. Then Savile and Mayan will tell you what clothes to buy and will dress her like a highborn Telvani. Then escort the pretty slave to see. Oh my, I gotta escort her to you? Oh my god, no wonder I always quit right around now. But when you talk to the wise woman about this, she's like, yeah, about that. Our Ashcan is delusional to think that a Telvani lord would let their daughters marry a dusty ass redneck, and she suggests that we find a more suitable bride for a guy whose balls are this vinegary. A slave would do nice, and just think about how happy the lady will be to no longer be a slave. It's a win-win. Sort of. I mean, yeah, I guess it is fucked up, but so is most of the shit in this game, and this is like the least screwed up thing that happens. Welcome, Bruce Banner, to the Festival Slave Market, the finest slaves in Vardenfell. I'm Seville and Mayan. Hmm. And I know we have just the slave for you. Are you looking for standard household slaves, Bruce Banner? Or are you looking for something special? Something special, indeed. You need a slave to pose as a highborn Telvani lady? Sweet Alma, that Sumnu Mu Zabamar and her cunning plans. I do have the slave you want. Falora Lilla. Dude, these are all made up words, man. A pretty Dunmer girl. But first, you must get an exquisite shirt, an exquisite skirt, and exquisite shoes to dress her in. Go get these exquisite clothes and bring them to me. And then we'll discuss a price for her. Hmm. Shit. So I went on a hunt to find the shirt, skirt, and shoes we needed to pass off this dirty little slave woman as a high-born Telvani lady. I went everywhere. All right. What do you want? Please tell me you have exquisite clothes. You son of a bitch, you don't. Let's hope that this person has uh, exquisite clothes. This guy does not have exquisite clothes. You don't think exquisite clothes are sold? Don't say that. Don't fucking say that. And it was true, as far as I could tell. Exquisite clothes are not sold at a vendor and have to be somehow procured off of someone who's currently wearing them. So I found the nearest person who had the clothes, which I needed, and took me to Aldrun in the Venom Manor. Is there something you... Y'all got, like, Dwemer and everything? Go good for you. you good for you. You guys are doing good for yourselves. Extravagant? No, we don't need extravagant. We need exquisite. Oh, this is all extravagant. It's extravagant, not exquisite. What's going on? George is getting angry. Can we hurry this up? Oh, it's you. You are the, the lady whose clothes I'm about to steal. Oh, she's wearing a skirt. Oh, I see now. Okay, we're gonna have to murder this lady for her shit. <laughs> okay, Outlander, make it quick. Boom. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Make it quick. I will. <laughs> I'll do exactly that. I'll come back here when I uh, get named the Hortator. <laughs> After murdering her in cold blood for her clothes. Boy, the Nerevarine gets up to some shit, don't he? <laughs> the Nerevarine really do be getting up to some shit. I know just the thing we need. Go get a bottle of Telvani bug mud. Come on! Okay. Fine. If it's here, that's great. She's gonna be super happy to hear that. I mean, to be freed you from your prison just to become some old man who lives out in the middle of a desert to become his wife and have to smell his nasty, stinking ass, salty vinegary ass balls when you go down on them. Ugh. It's just terrible. It's just awful. Oh boy. Yes, let's travel together. Oh god. 
Exactly. That's how I feel right now. That's exactly how I feel. I hope your ass can f fucking walk on water. Honestly, it's all the same. I'm... If she can't... Oh my god, she can't. Is she gonna get attacked? Dude, she's probably gonna get attacked. Where is she? Oh fuck, she's getting attacked. And I can't do anything to help her. Okay, oh. Oh, come on, lady. Try not to get fucking killed. Hope he doesn't mind uh, his, his wife being wet. I pre-moistened your wife. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty of pre-moistening your wife. <laughs> this is my new bride. I am very pleased with your gift, Bruce Banner. Though she is not so generous in the hips as I would like, I promise to make her a happy bride. And dude, just like, dude, she's right there, and you're saying this. What? What kind of guy are you, man? You don't say that right in front of her face. Becoming the Hortator of all the great houses is much the same as becoming the Nerevar of each tribe. You have to talk to someone high up in each house and convince them by doing them a favor to allow you to be named Hortator. But finding each person you need to talk to can be a pain in the ass, and honestly, I think the game expects you to do faction quests and eventually end up in front of the guy in charge. But I said, nah, screw that and went on the internet to find answers. And the first mission you might find yourself doing is the one with our boy, Crassius Curio. There he is. Yes, I am Crassius Curio, but you can call me Uncle Crassius. Oh, Uncle Crassius. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Can't talk business to anyone who doesn't belong to the house. Halalo, sweetie. <laughs> sweetie. Crassius tells us that in order for me to be named the Hortator, every council member of House Halalu needs to agree, and that everyone will be amiable except for one guy who has two other council members in his pocket, and no matter what we do, that guy will not have us stinking up the place. So we have to go all over the friggin' place, convincing people to vote for us as Hortator, which means that not only is there multiple phases to each quest, but multiple sub phases as well, which makes this quest especially move at a snail's pace. But after all that work, we get a reward. A reward that can't be compared to any other reward we've gotten thus far. And defy Orvis Dren. Yes, sweetie, I will name you Hortator. I have something to ask you. Will you give me a kiss? <laughs> all right. How tender and thoughtful. You've made me the happiest fellow in Vivek. And once we have everyone's approval, except for Dren's, we head over to his plantation for a little negotiation. Okay, now this is the place that I wanted to go to a long time ago. Because it has all kinds of nice shit in it. Yeah, okay. Bother someone else. Oh, the Daedric Greaves. Man, I need them. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing. It was nothing. Don't worry about it. You want to be the Hortador of House Halalu and you've come to me. You show unusual wisdom for an outlander, but that what's the title of Hortator Wharf to you? Why do you want to be Hortator? Uh, tell your story and ask to be conform confirmed to defeat Dagoth Ur and bring peace to Morrowin. You in like the peace of the grave we've had since the tribunal betrayed us and signed the armistice? Dagoth Ur has made me a better offer. The Sixth House will rise again and crush the Empire and those smug hypocrites in the Tribunal. But enough talk. I know that you now is my enemy, and you must die with the rest of the foreign devils. Oh boy. Mm, not great. Not a great outcome. <laughs> not a great outcome. For him. For me, it's, it's fucking perfect, but... All the counselors agree? Splendid, I'm so happy for you. What an honor. But no more than you deserve, Pumpkin. And now, I have a little treat for you. It's a belt given to the Hortator of House Halalu. Just snug it around that supple little waist. Now I know you have important things to do, but don't be a stranger. Don't neglect poor, lonely Uncle Crassius, your devoted admirer. After this mission, the rest of the great houses are pretty much the same. Get approval of all the counselors, kill a guy that doesn't agree with you, except for House Rhetoran, 
House Rhetorin has you challenge a guy to a duel in an arena, and that's about as creative as these missions get. The Telvanni questline has you doing much the same thing, but instead of kissing a horny old man, you have to play sub to a Dom Dumner woman. Every time I talk to her, I lose, I lose disposition, like, every time. Yeah. Oh, Bavik, I think it's a man. Uh, hurry yourself at her feet and plead for a hearing. Oh, that's so pathetic. Look at the poor bunny. Oh, I suppose now we must be merciful and at least listen to it. And she likes stepping on your nuts so much that she gives you her endorsement. And man, I don't know. That's really all I got to say about this shit because it really is straightforward and a massive pain in the ass. Probably the worst mission, or should I say, worst set of missions in the game. And that's just because it's just a bunch of stupid friggin' busy work. Go here, talk to them, bribe them, get named Hortator, move on to the next person on your list, but then you get the final set of missions, and that mission is delivered to you by Courier. In the note, it says that the High Fane of the Temple wants to see you, and when you get there, he tells you that the Ordinators are watching him, and that he's no longer in control of them. Vivek, the backstabbing asshole himself, has requested that you appear before him. He tells you that he will spread the word that you're the Nerevarine, whether we want him to or not, and he gives us a glove called Wraithguard, which is cool as shit, and has all kinds of constant effects that'll make your status effect bar look like a shopping list. He then proceeds to tell you how to kill Dagoth Ur. We need to retrieve two weapons from Red Mountain, Sunder and Keening. Both of these weapons are incredibly easy to find, and none of the enemies in either of these places can really stand up to a couple of punches from lefty and righty. Keening! Wow, look at that guy. Fortify Magicka, Fortify Health, Fortify Attack, Fortify Agility, Fortify Speed. Jeez. Imagine if you got this at the beginning of the game. Could. You absolutely could. Son of a bitch. There he is, Sunder. Holy shit, I might actually beat this game. After I got the weapons, it's time to find Dagoth Ur and punch him in the face. Or whatever the hell this thing is on his face. And the whole time you're heading to him, he's trying to talk to you. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. Come and look upon the heart and a Kulakan. And bring Wraithguard. I have need of it. Come to the heart chamber. I wait for you there where we last met countless ages ago. Come to me through fire and war. I welcome you. Eh. Seems like a nice enough guy. It's too bad he's up here in the mountain making friggin' ash zombies and dudes with carved out holes in their faces with an elephant trunk growing out of it. Welcome, Moon and Star. I have prepared a place for you. He's so nice that I'm actually thinking about not punching him in the face. It's hard to believe, but I'm starting to like this guy. Come, bring Wraithguard to the heart chamber. Together, let us free the cursed false gods. Welcome, Nerevar. Together we shall speak for the law and the land and shall drive the mongrel dogs of the Empire from Morrowind. Whoa, whoa, my guy, that sounded awfully racist. Gonna ask you to calm that shit down because your boy, the Nerevar, just so happens to be one of those mongrels, you prick. Is this how you honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned? Come to me openly and not by stealth. How much more open can I be when I am literally running up to all your boys and punching them to death? I don't think there's anything stealthy about that, bro. Welcome, Moon and Star, to this place where destiny is made. It began here, it will end here. Have you any parting words or would you prefer to skip speeches and get to our business? You are the challenger here after all, so to you goes the courtesy of the first blow. Man, I don't know. If you want me to get the first shot in, Dagother, shit might go real bad for you. Hey, where'd you go? <laughs> what the hell, dude? A fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? There is no escape. 
No recall or intervention can work in this place. Come, lay down your weapons. It is not too late for my mercy. Okay, we hit it. Now we gotta hit it with this. What are you doing? Stop! This is the end. The bitter, the bitter end. Okay, time to punch you to death. Oh shit, he's pretty strong actually. Not stronger than my potions. Ow. Shit, he is stronger than my potions. <clears throat> Well, that was quick. This is gonna take all fucking day. Three hours later. Okay, it's dead. You no longer bear the burden of prophecy. You have achieved your destiny. You are free. The doom Duima's folly, Lord Dagoth's temptation, the tribunal's seduction, the god's heart freed, the prophecy fulfilled. All fate sealed and sins redeemed. If you have pity, mourn the lost, but let the weeping cease. The blight is gone, and the sun's golden honey gilds the land. Hail, Savior, Hortator, and Nerevarine. Your people look to you for protection. Monster and villains, great and small, still threaten the people of Vardenfell. Enemies and evils abound, yet indomitable will might rid Morrowind of all its ills. For you are thanks and blessing. Our gift and token given. Come, take this thing from the hand of God. And now that we've punched a god to death, it's time that we look back on our journey and reflect on what we've done. We've traveled all over Morrowind, avoiding doing quests, made a bunch of skill trainers insanely rich, plumbed the depths of random caves, killing innocent people for their clothing and trading slaves for wives to backwards hillbillies. We harvested the souls of saints to craft gear and we kissed old men and called them uncle. The journey of a prophesized hero is at its end. And given that this is the first time that I've ever beaten this game, that's right, this is my first time, be gentle. Given that this is my first time, I will remember it, but was it memorable at times? I mean, there are some missions in this game that you just can't get anywhere else, but it has its highs and it has its lows. But overall, I still think that this is the best game that Bethesda has ever created and will go down as my favorite game of all time. What's your favorite Bethesda game? Hit me up in the comments below. And if you made it this far, throw me a thumbs up and a subscribe. And you know, if you want to see more content like this and uh, you don't want to see me disappear off of YouTube, maybe go hit up the Patreon. And as usual, this has been a rant from strategy and now that you heard it, go play some games.